Hi guys, we're actually joined by Kieran Edwards today. Um, so yeah, Kieran, let's get straight into it. Thanks for joining us. Really appreciate Thank it. Guys, it's, been a, it's a pleasure, man. Thank you for having me on. No, of course, of course. Um, so it's myself and Sam here today, Hello. chatting to you. Um, so really, to hey, kick hey. to kick things off, Karen, just wanted to really understand how you got into filmmaking. Of course, yeah. Well, I started. I started out. It was two thousand four. I was applying for courses at college, and I saw a course that was a writing music for film, and I thought that would be awesome because. As well as making cool films and hanging around with cool dudes like yourselves, time, <laughs> etc. Um, my my uh, my soul is into music, and I'm a drummer. And oh, I nice. saw this music for film, and I thought that'd be awesome. So you know, I applied for it, and uh, something happened, and it ended up being the year later. And I thought, I don't know. I'm a very patient person in, in the sense where I want to get things done. Yeah. And I saw there was another course which was HND filmmaking. And I thought, oh, okay, actually making films. I thought, wow, that'd be awesome. And it was at uh, Worcester University in Worcestershire. And it was ran at Kidderminster College. Um, so I did that course, uh, H&D, for two years at Kiddy College slash Worcester Uni. And then I went to Wolverhampton, uh, where I topped the university, where I topped it to a degree, to a nice. two-year degree. So where it, where it all started out this was, uh, yeah, it was like from a college course, really. That's pretty cool. I hope you weren't like me in the sense that whenever you were younger, massively into music, you ended up starting a really unsuccessful band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To be honest, um, we, um, we used to practice in my parents' well, in my bedroom, like my parents' house. <laughs> and it was only like, a, um, yeah, my drum kit was just a collection of things I think that we'd found in the street over the years. And uh, it was my, old, my sister's old drum kit, and I was just nicked it. I it in my bedroom. I just taught myself, and then the guys came round, and we recorded some pretty bad stuff. Um, but then we just practiced, like, and we got a few more people in, and uh, me and my mate Pete Mould, and we started the band, so Comanche Tribe. And um, we, we were getting into it, like, and we, we did all right, actually, man. That was, uh, that, was, that was five of us in the end, and uh, played some gigs, and we won the Battle of the Bands in Worcester. We, we did all right, man. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, mine was filled. <laughs> I was in a, a prog rock sort of psychedelic band, uh, but now we're, we're carrying with another band, which is pretty similar because it's kind of the same members. But uh, yeah, it's, it's looking good, man. But yeah, we, we, it started out pretty bad. That's fair, fair. It's cool that you still got that passion. Um, Kieran, what was the first film you actually made? Oh, it was uh, a film called Rodwell. Okay. Um, and it was basically a, you know, it was a crime thriller set in this made up uh, city about a guy sabotaging uh, plants um, that, they, that they, they're going to build an incinerator. So this guy breaks into this dude's house and steals, steals the plants like sabotages it. Uh, he gets uh, followed, gets chased, and uh, we even stuck a car chase scene in it as well. Nice. <laughs> which was really funny, like, which is really funny. What was funny was, the um, so this guy breaks into his house, he nicks the plants, um, then the guy who owns the house, like, he ended up being, he's the mayor of this town, um, his henchman turned up, he manages to escape, gets in the car. The henchman chase him in the car, like I said, car chase. And uh, we borrowed this bloke's uh, replica kind of like an assault rifle. Jesus. So the one guy's leaning out the window, like, shooting in the car. Um, and it was yeah, obviously good fun at the time. Anyway, about, probably about, I don't know, probably about a month later, we were out again at college filming another film, and we were out and about. And uh, I got pulled over by this, um, this, this um, undercover police car. Oh, crikey. So, obviously, no, I'm, I'm breaking it. Um, and he comes up to the car and he's like, uh, step out the vehicle, please, mate. So I got out the vehicle and he says, uh, have you got any guns or drugs in the car? <laughs> uh, no, no, it's a wonderful search of cars. Yeah, carry on. And he got everything out of the car, man. He was like, what's all this? Oh, we're making a film. So, what's the film about? So, that's just like, well, it was a scene from a film he chose. It was Stand By Me. And we were filming this one scene on the railway tracks um, with the Seven Valley Railway. Which people around here would, would in um, Worcestershire would know. But yeah, it's just a steam vintage railway, and it was like February, so it was closed, obviously, because it was the winter. And he was just like really, we stood there for about 40 minutes just chatting to him, and he, he completely like, you know, flipped from the bad cop to the good cop. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was interesting, but yeah, it was, um, so that film was Rodwell, it was, it was five minutes, um, and 
uh, it was alright man, it was fun for the car chase, it's just hilarious though, it's good fun. <laughs> I can imagine driving around Wich- Wichester, um, and uh, yeah. yeah, just <laughs> with your gun out the window, <laughs> the public yeah. just like, what yeah. the heck is going on? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Karen, I was going to ask um, if you could tell us a little bit more about um, Devil's Familiar. Oh, my dude, yeah. The Devil's Familiar. It was uh, it was a really cool to make, you know. It was, um, I'll, be, I'll be short, obviously, because I know that I can talk for England. <laughs> You're so, all right. <laughs> everybody, please get comfortable. No. Um, so, yeah, so, again, being back in college, the Devil's Familiar, the idea came from this idea I did a film I made in college about this mysterious like kind of mythical creature living in these woods and uh, this, this couple go for a walking holiday and having a good old stroll around and this mythical creature beast is following them but you only see um, the POV and uh, this, this monster like, kills this dude and this girl gets away and kind of finishes okay. so I'm like 13 years later I was thinking like I really wanted to make obviously like you know my idea for the next film and everything and so 2018, 2018, we started filming it, and basically what it's about is uh, these two, it's a found footage film. So the, the start of the film, is, uh, you see these police officers chatting, COD officers chatting in a room. The uh, DCI Barker's at the front, he's explaining that uh, this video was handed into the police. He's already watched it, and he says it's shocking, like the most brutal thing he's seen. He wanted them all to watch it and make notes, jot down things, you know. So the film starts. And in fact, the film is about two, these two student filmmakers. And they're making their final film for their degree. And they go out and they basically reopen the case from these murders that happened in 2006. Where these two blokes were murdered and this girl got sent down for the murders. Okay. But conspiracy theories about this mythical creature living in these woods. Like everyone's kind of point the finger and blame to, to the beast really. But anyway, this girl gets sent down for it. So these two student filmmakers go back and they uh, they want to they want to know what happened back in 2006. They want to they reopen the case. They go back. They interview key witnesses. Um, they go and uh, see Sally Edwards, who was originally sent down for the murder. They interview her. She's now currently residing in a psychiatric unit, and they just want to go back and prove that it was actually the beast of Ribs of Woods that killed these people and other people before in the past. And kind of prove that Sally was innocent. How did you find working yeah. within uh, found footage? Like, did you enjoy working with found footage? I did. I did. It was the one thing I really made the guys do was be as natural as possible. Mm. And even, which I, I might, I'll explain later, painstakingly, I'd say, obviously, <laughs> no change the lines, guys. No, I don't expect people, though, the actors to say word for word, line for line, because. I'm pretty shit at writing scripts, I'll be honest. I always give it to the actors and they always make it better anyway. Nice. <laughs> and I was thinking, like, you know, man, you need to make this so natural, like it's found footage, you know. And it was really tough because we kind of practiced the lines and everything, this this one part. And I thought, right, we, we've got that bit now. So I was thinking, how am I going to get the next bit done? So I just kind of, I was, I was filming it, we got to that part, and I, I just kind of went, oh no, uh-uh, the battery, the battery's going to die, the battery's going to die. And then I cut it then. Then we practiced the, the second half of the scene. Then I recorded again. And I was like, oh yeah, call battery in. Here we go, guys. And it we kind of just carries on. Oh, nice. So it's kind of well, it was well kind of practiced in that sort of sense where we kind of, I, I've got initial parts where I, I know, say, so spin the camera around and I'll cut it. We practice the next bit and then carry on. We well, edit it sort of a bit, a bit. I have like this kind of filter sort of thing over the top of it to make it a bit more grainy. And I only had it on certain bits. And uh, Tom came around, Tommy Butter. Obviously, good buds of mine, likes, as, as yourselves. He's yeah, super. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, Ran, you need to, Ran, you need to like, leave, leave that, that grainy sort of look on. It looks really cool. And automatically, it gives it that feel straight away. But it was so hard because there's shots that I really wanted to do, like, you know, over the shoulder, like, wide, like, all these different shots. But obviously, you can't because it's found footage, isn't it? 
Yeah, you got it's your like limitations. Up there and there. <clears throat> so I was really, and again, I was really trying not to be too shaky, shaky, you know, and it's sort of a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and you're watching, you're like, I'm going to be sick. You know, you've had, a, you've had a few beers or whatever, and you sat there watching it, you know, and people, people would just be like, I can't watch this. Just turn it on, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the thing with when it comes to um, when it comes to like docu horror that sort of thing or like found footage horror. What I've found in experience is it is all about what kind of format you're playing with. So I tend to not do found footage. I tend to try and focus more on that documentary side of things, which sounds yeah, like the, the devil's familiar went in a similar path. Absolutely, man. Yeah, and that was it. The main guy, he's the, um, uh, uh, Elliot Moon, played by Uriel Davis. He was like the man. He was like because we were students and like we were trying to make this documentary. Absolutely, he was like he was like the main dudes, and it was all on him really. He was leading where you were going and how how he was feeling, and we, we shot some pretty cool locations actually. Um, we filmed at the Westmoreland Safari Park. Oh, cool. Uh, we filmed at Little Owl Farm, and we filmed at Kidderminster Hospital. Nice. As well, that was cool. This old like basically it's not abandoned. It's just not used. Um, ward. It's this huge ward, man. Literally, I mean, obviously, I got permission, you know, I, I, you know, did it properly, like, but it was stunning, man, you know? Ah, it's awesome, it's really man. really good. Yeah. And it's nice to have that kind of different variation in the found footage rather than it all being in, I don't know, just, just the woods, like, for example. Yeah. Kind of it mixes like, it up a little bit. Yeah, it was cool. Um, it was cool. It was really good, man. I really enjoyed it. It was, it was, it was different. It was nice. Nice. Karen, I was just going to ask, <clears throat> we, we kind of spoke beforehand about um, Horror on Sea. Um, so yeah, just kind of wanted to get your your view on it and your experience. Wow, well, wow, that's all I've got to say. You know, me and my mate Nobby, <laughs> you know, from the Seven Heads crew, we turned up and, you know, instantly, like, everybody was so nice. You know, everybody. Even the, the bar staff were really nice, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really nice. You know, there's really cool people here that make films, and it's going to be like I, I've never been to a film festival, I've never entered a film into a film festival. I was a bit kind of about it, and you know, thinking that they're going to be really big headed, they're going to be like the polar opposite. They were the loveliest people I've ever met. They were friendly. They were really welcoming. Uh, friends for life, man. I've made friends there for life, definitely. Oh, and yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. It's like an addiction now. I just have to make a film. I have to get into <laughs> horror scene. I have to go to horror and scene. Just an excuse to, to go. There. Yeah, it's just fantastic. Honestly, it really is. My experience was absolutely fantastic. I, I cannot put one fog in that, in that place. It's run really well. It's, oh, it's just, it, the place is brilliant. It's... It's fantastic. Everyone supports really? each other. So like what we've kind of spoke about on our podcast quite frequently is it's not that competitive. Of yeah. course, you're trying to get your film out there and you're trying to get publicity from it, but everyone's there to support each other and it's a brilliant network. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. 100%. You know, it's not a... It's my film and I'm making this film on my own. I don't want anybody's help. It's like, make this film, cool. Yeah. Let's share it. Let's yeah. just share it. Let's just get it out everywhere. Like you said, everyone helps it out in each other's films. I mean, like, obviously spoke about Tom, um, yeah. spoke about and, uh, Baz, Baz Hampshire. Yeah, yeah. You know, and um, obviously all the gang up here, you know, obviously everyone all helps each other out up here. You know, Tom's being, Tom's and the Devil's familiar. Um, I want to be in his next film, to be honest, but we all, everyone just helps each other out. It's fantastic. It really is. It's so, like you say, everyone's so supportive. Mm. And, uh, Right networking, and even but obviously nowadays because we've got the the, uh, the internet like so we can do everything, can't we? We can share to everywhere and anyone, and it's lovely. It is, man. It's really nice. <coughs> it is, and it makes like so this makes you just want to do more and more and more, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Everyone's so nice, you know. And then like say someone's got an idea and they've like they've, they've already started, and you're there thinking, oh, I gotta, I gotta hurry up, you know. I'm, I'm gonna get going. <laughs> This kind of leads into talking about your next film, Blood Demons, because if I'm right, a lot of uh, horror on sea favourites are in this film. Dude, there's some bang. There's a, this is a banging lineup. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's epic. You know what I mean? It's, it's like we've got uh, James Taylor, 
playing there, Jack. We've got um, Gary Baxter playing Professor Moses. We've got uh, Danny Thompson playing Moyley. Who was on the podcast uh, a couple of weeks ago. Absolutely, man. I shared that bad boy as well. Nice. She's, uh, she's <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. She's up before. It's going to be brilliant. Um, David Fenn, another horror and seal uh, favourite like him. Uh, he's uh, just a peak. James Underwood, uh, he's Dominic. I need, uh, I need to get a, few more, a couple more people. Uh, and also, like people I've used, um, uh, the boys in, uh, in my film so far, we've got uh, uh, Elliot, uh, not Elliot, sorry, Uriel Davis. I'm so used to calling him Elliot now. Uriel Davis, <laughs> uh, he's playing, um, hopefully I've, I've not spoken to him face to face yet, obviously with what's going on, but here we go. Um, he's going to be uh, Tiago. And uh, Ross Booney is going to be uh, Camp Rubin. And Dave Clark is going to be Sasania. So it's a nice mixture of all these awesome dudes, like. In this crazy vampire film that I've written, <laughs> it's uh, it's a, an idea that I had, oh god, again years ago, you know. And a, a bloke I used to look after in the care homes when I worked in the care homes, like his, his brother-in-law, um, directed like uh, Red Dwarf and Father Ted. And, oh, nice. Yeah, he's fantastic, Andy. Uh, he's fantastic, and. Uh, he was like, oh, um, what well, before you, you know, you sort of start making the film, send me the script, I'll have a little, you know, little look through it, you know, not rewrite it, but just tell me, point me in the right direction, really. So I was like, cool, man, this is obviously like back in 2010, when I started writing it, so it's, you know, ages ago. So I got it on the go, started writing it, send it back and forth to him, and he was really like, you know, it's cool, what's getting there, you know, you know, for example, why are they going there, and why are they doing this? And you look, and you think, yeah, that guy was absolutely right. Absolutely right. So 12, 12 drafts later, I think now, um, I stopped sending them to him again. I think, uh, well, he's not going to want to have the sixth copy, you know. <laughs> uh, I leave it there, sort of thing. But uh, he, uh, he, yeah, he's wonderful. But, uh, so, um, so, yeah, so we, uh, we went off, and basically it's about uh, it's like this chap called Jake. He uh, grows wheat with this gangster. And all this wheat, they would have this, this big ass party. Anyway, the next day they're all hanging and stuff, and they go down into the uh, into the cellar where, where the cannabis factory is. Like, they have some, all the plants are fucked, they're ruined, they're all burned, they're singed. It's what they're all wasted. And it's not like ten plants. There's going to be like, I have to probably see you on this. There's going to be like four hundred <laughs> plants or something there. You know, it's going to be mint. Anyway, all these plants are ruined, and they both know that that's it. Jake and this other guy called uh, with that Tony, they basically know that they're basically screwed. They're dead. This gangster's going to murder them, basically. And it turns out, this gangster turns up, uh, this gangster turns up and he says, like, look, guys, basically, after some torture, says, um, to repay the debt that you owe me, I want you to find this rare strain of uh, cannabis called Sabertooth. And this chap, who's friends with Jake, he goes travelling a lot, and he sends him seeds from all over the shop, all over the world. And he's, he's growing this plant, Jake, but knowing that it's this rare strain of cannabis, like called the saber tooth. And Mr. P, like this gangster, really questions Jake, like, why has he got this plant? Where did he get it from? And basically, you need to go and find out where they grow these plants, get all the seeds, and that bit, you know, you guys can go. So Jake and Professor Moses, they go over to, uh, to Barga, where their friend is. Uh, and every year there's an annual rock festival there. They turn it rock out and they're trying to find this weed. They're trying to find um, their mate Harvey, who obviously had the seeds in the first place, to track him down. They're really trying to track him down. They can't find him. Again, unknown to Jake and Professor Moses, this uh, weed is grown by the, this evil vampire cult. Who uses <laughs> vampire. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous, isn't it? They grow this weed, and when people smoke it, they're kind of like kind of toast. You know, they're just completely out of it. They're just, you know, lying there sort of tripping their balls off. And that's when the vampires come in. Nice. Drain their blood, take them back. They use their bodies as fertiliser to grow the weed, you see. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. You've got to recycle these things. Yeah, yeah. That's one way to get rid of the body. <laughs> you're, um, you're, you're currently running a Kickstarter campaign for it as well, aren't you? I am, too. And I sat there and I thought, you know what, man? I thought, oh, if I was really, really, really loaded, well, if I was really fucking loaded, I'd, I'd, I'd give money to everybody's film. 
Do you know you guys, everyone, you know what I mean? But anyway, <laughs> yeah. I'm waffling, I'm doing that bit, I'm waffling away again. Uh, so yeah, so I thought I'll set up a GoFundMe page, and I thought I'll set the target for three grand, which I thought it's really high, like you know. But I thought, you know what it's like. You have a party, you invite thirty people, fifteen people look up. Yeah. You know. So I thought I'll raise it higher and hope I get like, you know, some some money for it, if, if any at all, really. And so far I've got um, over seven hundred quid. Nice. Nice. Which is like, whoa, which is absolutely fantastic. I think it's actually nearly 800 because these people, these ladies from Bobby Bliss, and they're like, oh, I, don't, I don't really like to put my bank details online. Can I give you the money? It's like, yeah, yeah, I just pay <laughs> into, into my bank and then pay into the go for me then. But it's, it's wonderful, man. It's been wonderful. And again, you know, I just wanted to get these wonderful actors like, like you know, Gary and Danny and other people. And... You know, actually, I was like, pay for basically their accommodation, their travel, like food and drinks, obviously, when they're, when they're, up, when they're up here. Um, I wanted to get, um, obviously, some really cool, like, um, costumes, like, real good costumes and things. Like, you know, I've seen these the hooded robe figures, the actual vampires that, you know, go in and kill people when they're off their, off their heads. They're, they're, they're kind of like these really dark robes, like, really long black robes. But, nice. You know, you don't want to get, like, you know, like ones that cost like a five or something because they look more like Halloween. Sort of yeah, no, I know really, what you mean. Than, you know, and I thought, like, I want to make these bad, make them look badass, you know. So, yeah, so like costume. Um, obviously, um, I wanted to get like, obviously, uh, Rachel Painter, the lady from uh, around here again. She's a wicked makeup artist. She's done loads with for, for Tom and she's, and as, she's awesome. So I've got her in and we're going to make some actual, like, hopefully vampire full you know, prosthetic or like um, masks, like forehead masks or things. Oh, like, nice. You know, make it great the bollocks, man. It's like, you know, stuck up on the blood, stuck up on the gore, you know, we'll go and get slow. And these plants, you know, I want to make the, the actual, <laughs> this actual plant really weird and like, really, I don't know, more like a, tr- like a vampire weird tree thing. I'll probably give it too much away here, probably, you know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, other stuff like lighting and um, drone hire as well. I think maybe some drone footage would be cool. Yeah. Even if it's just establishing, you know, the location, or maybe the POV for the vampires. Oh, well, like as if they're bats. Yeah, so they're like flying, you know, yeah, kind of, cool. like the Lost Boys. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Flying, you know, that sort of thing. Oh, that'd be cool. And, you know, the one thing that you guys know as well as, as everybody else, like, you know, if you want to have really cool people in your film, or just people, just anyone in your film, you know, if you make them a brew and knock them up a sandwich, you know, they're happy, aren't they? Yeah. At the end of the day, you've got to look after, you've got to look after people. I've always thought that. Always and, have a couple uh, of drinks so, yeah, at the so, end, you know. <laughs> a few jars as well, but uh, yeah, mainly, man, you know, mainly, guys, uh, the go from me, um, it's going to say go towards, like, the kind of, the, um, like I'm actually making the film really, making sure it flows, you know, uh, making sure everyone's obviously looked after, um, everybody's obviously safe and stuff and fed and it looks cool, it sounds good as well, you know. Um, so yeah, that, that's, I think that's pretty much it, I think, at the minute. Nice, nice. Um, Kieran, final question from myself, really, is um, have you got... Have you got like a, a dream project that you would love to sort of work on in the future? If you had no budgets, no like no restraints, yeah. I would definitely make. I would remake the Last Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you can't! No, you can't believe you just said that. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll start that off. It's your mindset. That's for a different talk. Do you know how long I've, I've tried to hold myself from talking Star Wars stuff on our podcast? And you've just opened a can of worms right now. <laughs> I love The Last Jedi. I love The Last Jedi. Did you really love it? I have more of a problem with Rise of Skywalker, but... Rise of Palpatine. Yeah. That's what it should have been called, brother. It should have been called The Rise of Palpatine. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think we've got. I don't think we've got long enough. We'll, we'll get you one when we do a Star Wars episode. We'll get you to do a recalling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah but, um, no, but um, I think it would be really cool uh, to make a film. Um, I 
make like some kind of um, Victorian steampunk horror. Nice. That's like, interesting. Sets, like, literally, like in period clothing, like everyone's in period clothing and have like, you know, these really kick ass shots of like, you know, sort of, I don't know, say Birmingham or London back in the day. And it's like completely like, you know, in Victorian England. And have some, I don't know, man. I've, and like with the steampunk as well, I think it would just be awesome. Mm. What would be the, the kind of um, villain then? Oh, man, I don't know, man. It's even, I, I don't know, it's even going to be something lurking in the River Thames, like, or, uh, <laughs> or, or, or just, like, I mean, War of the Worlds, really, as well. I'll, I'll be honest, War of the Worlds, for me, it's just, it, I, I love it so much. And I would love to, like, probably remake, more, like, do my own version of War of the Worlds, but set it completely in Victorian times. But did Ooh. you see the one they did recently? No, I didn't catch the BBC one. The BBC one. It started off really cool, and it just went really weird and strange. A lot of people probably disagree with me, like, which obviously everyone's a top to their own opinion. Like, but, uh, yeah, I've always lived for in the world. Maybe, maybe chasing the Argonauts. That'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be cool. That'd be cool. I don't know really, man, what my dream project would be, really. I just think that it's just so wonderful, like, at the moment, just making stuff. And, you know, just meeting new people, I mean, like, talking to you guys, it's fantastic, you know, it's lovely, nice, it is absolutely lovely. I think it's a case of uh, one day I'm just going to watch something and go, oh my God, I need to do that. <laughs> you know, I need to make that film, you know, I really do. But, uh, yeah, man, it's, uh, I think there's a few, to be honest, but there's quite a few. I think with the um, War of the Worlds side of things, Tom Cruise is always a win for me. War of the Worlds obviously been the original. I know, not the yeah, no, but they, they, they did the remake, didn't oh, yeah, they? Yeah. The Naughties or whatever it was. Yeah. Did you like that one, dude? I I can't. Yeah, I liked it. I, I like Tom Cruise. He he's always oh, running dude. and stuff. And is he on high five in him? Yeah. <laughs> not my favorite actor, yeah, but. <laughs> I was. I'm always like that with Christopher Lee. Yeah. I, yeah. I love well, he is a god in himself. Oh, you know, it's just like, what, what a dude, man, you know. For Can't example, do if, you know, if I could do that, then he'd have, he'd have to have Christopher Lee as the voice of um, humanity, I think. You'd have, you'd have to be, you know. Obviously not now, it's just too late, but... Uh, no, I know, I know. Yeah. But you'd love but, him in... Go on. to just walk on the stack on the, on the, onto the screen and like, that's it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just presence. Well, yeah, it's just like, wow, that's amazing. You know, he's just a dude. Gotta love a bit of Christopher Lee. Um, anyway, Karen, wanted to say thank you for taking your time. I know it's um, pretty late. Um, but yeah, really, no, thank no, you for coming no. on. And uh, no, thank you for having me, guys. You're no, more than good. welcome. It's good. It's been a good chat. And um, yeah, if you, if you've got anything else you want to say to sort of say goodbye. Plug away. Oh, yes. I'd just like to thank my mum and my dad. Uh, <laughs> I'd just like to thank you guys. It's been so cool. No, um, no, yeah, thanks guys for listening. And thank, again, thanks for having me on the show. It's been really cool. It's cool. Been, uh, it's been really cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so obviously the uh, I've got a, a Facebook page, uh, which is Severed Head Entertainment. Um, there's also, I've got a YouTube channel as well. Which is just Kieran Edwards, which is spelled K I E R A N uh, Edwards. And I think I'm posing with my sunglasses on, kind of giving the devil horns, trying to look cool. That, that's, that's me. Um, and the Go <laughs> Funger page link, uh, is on the Severed Heads Entertainment Facebook page. So if you guys um, want to have a look, uh, if you want to donate, even if it's a shiny pound, if it's 50p, well, that's blooming lovely. Um, so all the links and stuff on the Facebook page, and I've got uh, it's www.sevenheadentertainment.co.uk for uh, for pictures and stuff and bits and bobs. Um, so yeah, um, again, thanks for having me, um, and stay cool, and stay safe, and yeah, rock and roll. No worries, man. Speak to you soon. Thanks, Karen. Thanks so much. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. bye.